All right, good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Andrew Lawrence. Uh, I have with me uh, Dirk Bergerman. We're both on the product management team for Commerce Cloud. Uh, and both of us are responsible for the developer persona uh, within Commerce Cloud. So tools that uh, developers use to run against Commerce Cloud kind of fall under our domain. Today we want to talk about a little bit how we're changing up the Commerce Cloud sandbox environment. Uh, we're going to have a look at uh, new ways that we'll acquire sandboxes for Commerce Cloud and talk about those. Um, but as usual, um, this is all new stuff that we're developing. We'll be coming out through next year. So we want to remind everyone to base your buying decisions on top of what's already currently available. In the e-commerce world, uh, it becomes, it's becoming more and more important for uh, retailers to be as agile as possible. They need to be able to develop and test new things and get them rolled out into production and then turn around and repeat the process over and over again. And the iteration of those cycles is getting shorter and shorter. So if you take as an example, a real world example, uh, retailers, what if they uh, suddenly had the ability that they could take advantage of some national advertising, but they need to do it in the next few days. And this is actually a, a use case that has come up with a number of retailers. Oftentimes when they need to take advantage of that advertising, they'll pull in a developer, they may want to change some things up on the website to prepare for it, to put in new content slots on the website, maybe make some updates to the main landing page, or the product detail page, those type of things. Currently in the Commerce Cloud world, that would involve a, a developer using uh, what we call a sandbox. They'd make their development changes there. Once they've made those changes, they deploy them to a test environment. They let the business check and test them out, and then they're deployed into production. The current sandboxes um, that are within the Commerce Cloud are actually currently part of your uh, initial uh, uh, implementation of Commerce Cloud. So when you sign up for Commerce Cloud, you decide how many sandboxes you're going to need, and those sandboxes are allocated to you as a merchant. So if you need an additional, uh, uh, from the start you need, say, 20 sandboxes, those are set up and are part of your uh, uh, contract with Commerce Cloud. But what happens when you need another sandbox? So currently, the process for another sandbox is you reach out to Commerce Cloud support and they can set up a new sandbox and put it out there for you. That process for getting a new sandbox could happen in a few hours, but more likely it's going to take a few days to get those sandboxes set up. Um, once those sandboxes are set up, they're then part of your environment. So sandboxes today currently are not temporary things that are brought up. They're permanent things that are now permanently part of your environment. And in addition, the sandboxes that exist today, um, they come in kind of one size. They come pre-set up, they have predefined capacity in what they can do, they have a predefined data set that they initially come set up with, so usually as soon as you get a new sandbox, the first steps you're taking are to apply your data to it and make sure that it's up to the way that you want it to be running. But we're, I mean, as you can tell, there are a number of limitations from this process. So what if you're, just adding new developers, you know, as you, teams get bigger, they need more sandboxes. Oftentimes, Commerce Cloud today, uh, retailers or merchants or partners will set them up that every developer has one sandbox that's assigned to them. So if you hire another developer, you need uh, more sandboxes. Or what if you're just putting together a tiger team uh, that's only going to work on something for maybe the next four to six weeks, uh, possibly contractors. You want to ramp up and have them sandboxes, but after that six weeks, you likely don't need them anymore. Uh, other limitations, we've started to see a number of, uh, of development shops that want to use sandboxes as automated testing environments, which we encourage and want to encourage everyone to use. Um, and sandboxes seem like a great fit and they can do a lot of things, but like we mentioned, they kind of come in one size currently, so expanding their capacity and their performance is not something that's currently available. And then finally, um, we have people who are starting to implement uh, a true CI-CD process to get things into production. A sandbox seems like a great thing that you should be able to use as part of that process. It's, it goes through the pipeline to get into production, bring up sandbox, deploy everything into it, run through the automated test, and then tear the sandbox down. So these, those limitations have kind of led us into a number of changes that we're making. We've started making over the last few months, and we're going to be continue to making through 2018 with a new mechanism to get on-demand sandbox acquisition. 
So we want sandboxes to be as easy to acquire as scratch orgs and those type of things within Salesforce. We want them to be able to be something that can be done from a developer, from either a REST API or from a command line tool like Salesforce DX, to be able to get these sandboxes, bring them, spin them up, specify configurations for them, use them, and then decommission them and send them back. Um, and be able to do that and get the sandboxes spun up within minutes instead of hours or days. So what we wanted to do today is, I have Dirk here with me, he's going to kind of take us through what we've built up so far uh, with the sandboxes and talk a little bit about a beta program that we'll be opening up in 2018. Dirk. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. Um, that's me. I'm Cody, the bear, of course. Um, and I have, a, I have a great product owner over there who, who is just busy with filling up my backlog, right? And, and what, what usually comes in at a short notice, he wants to have one functionality ready by tomorrow, and he wants to get it quick. So what do I need, actually? So what I want to guide you through is um, how we trans envision, actually, that the developer uses a tool to bring up a sandbox for their development very quickly. So let me just um, switch over. So that is um, what we did is, um, and we are very early in the development, but what we did is we have created a set of REST APIs um, that connect with a Docker Kubernetes environment on AWS, which allows a self-service system to uh, get information of sandboxes in the ROM, create sandboxes, and delete sandboxes on demand. That may basically means we, we give it in the hand of the developer when he needs one to bring one up. When he, he doesn't need it anymore, he can basically deprovision it again. So those are the four, the four controllers, the get, and the post and the delete. And we have just put it up here in Swagger UI just to make it more visible that the REST API is basically um, available and, and can be shown. So what we usually do is, at that point, we just trigger our API for a certain run. And what happens now is that I actually get a 401 response. A 401 response means I'm Without authentication, I am not eligible actually to connect to that ROM. So what usually comes now is to authenticate. We need to uh, authenticate our REST APIs with the, uh, our central identity management system um, in order to, uh, for me as a developer, to really be able to really create sandboxes on that ROM. So at that point in time, I need to switch over uh, to slides because, and this is no joke, this is just 15 minutes ago, we lost our connection to our IDM. So I will come back to Chrome again later, but let me switch over to, um, to some slides to just show you the, uh, uh, the workflow there. So this is the Swagger UI we have seen before. And when you try to, uh, to create that, we have this 401 response at the beginning. And what we need to do is the authentication. That basically means we connect to our identity management system, get a token back. And with that token, we can authenticate our APIs for that, for that run. And once we start that in an authenticated way, we get a list of available sandboxes on that run. At that point, just have a look here. It is actually one sandbox is already available there. It is already occupied by another development team and we want to create a new one. In that case, in that case we use the POST API and create on the, on the, uh, on the ROM ZZZ with a set of parameters a new environment up. When I'm saying a new environment up, at the moment it is really a template-based standard development environment, similar to what we have in place today. It is based on a standard configuration, 
this is as it is at the moment. And once I have created that, uh, uh, triggered basically the post request, I get the response back that I now have a second sandbox started and it's going to get set up. At that point, what really happens is <clears throat> we trigger the Kubernetes uh, functionalities and we are setting up a complete tech stack in AWS in our environment there with a database, an application server, a web tier layer, and including all of our commerce cloud functionality. So we can visit it and, 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 and see that actually happening in our um, log center. This is a customer facing tool that we have. So the uh, developer can, can look for that and check uh, what, what's really happening on that realm. And once the system is set up, and, and you need to take my word now, at the moment it takes up to two, two minutes, 30 seconds, two and a half minutes, something like this, that the set, sandbox is up and running. You can access this via, via the URL that you see here on top. So the realm and the sandbox name, and then you can log in and basically do your work that you need to do in order to uh, set up your development set. So we have now in the sandbox all of the access information to place your cartridges in, to, uh, v to fuel your, your log files, and basically connect your development environment like Visual Code or whatever you have directly with the sandbox, do your work, put it on, on the sandbox, start your, your testing, and basically get your PO coming back to the sandbox and, and check the functionality. That's pretty impressive uh, from my perspective because if you just recall what, what, what Andrew showed, the big process that we have in place right now, which takes up to hours or even days, we are pretty fast now to provide such an environment. So if you just compare that to Salesforce DX, I need to check time, if you just compare that to Salesforce DX, they have a similar process like the scratch orgs that they are setting up in the DX environment. So that is comparable to that. So let me just go back to the, to the previous slides. Or other way around, let me just give you the sense about this. When we go in Chrome, this is the sandbox that I wanted to create, the SO2, if you just check the URL. But I can access the, uh, the SO1, which is the previously created one. And this is available. And if I, IDM is there, then you can basically log in. And with the integration of that identity management system, we just make sure that only eligible developers are really creating sandboxes in the customer environment. So that's only um, from a permission perspective, ev everything set. So let's go back to the slides. Um, we were here. So now I have done my coding and I have basically provided this functionality over to, uh, to Andrew and Andrew checked it and, and released it. And now it can be basically uh, go to the production system. What we would like to do is in the future, is to really completely align with Salesforce DX. You probably know if you have heard of DX already, it is a set of command line tools that they provide today. So you can at your fingertips or as part of an automation process, Jenkins CI or whatsoever, you can, you can man manage and orchestrate your complete development environment. So and everything that you see here on the, on the left hand side, which starts with force is something that Salesforce DX calls topics. A topic for organization creation, a topic for lightning, a topic for Apex development, and so forth. And our plan is within the next, let's say, three to six months, to become a topic within Salesforce DX. So something like I wrote here on, on the bottom, it is actually a commerce cloud sandbox create, so that you can do everything that you need to do in the Salesforce hemisphere, no matter if you work with marketing cloud or with sales cloud or with commerce cloud, you can do it out of one tooling set. So that is the plan. What we aim for is beginning next year, we will start onboarding pilot customers on that system with the running identity management, of course. 
and um, and I ask everybody, or invite everybody actually, who, whoever's interested, who has an own development force as a customer or as an ISV, and who who frequently works with a lot of sandboxes, so 10 plus whatever, um, to just contact us, and we would like to invite you basically to also participate in that pilot phase. We aim at the first run for five customer, five ISVs, to basically go with us this path, streamline the functionality, get it into a production-like mode in the course of next year, but you will have then early access to the system and hands-on already. All right, so now Cody is leaving the stage again, and I'm handing over to Andrew again. <laughs> Thanks, Dirk. All right, so a lot of, lot of information there. Um, to invite you, uh, please visit us at the, at the booth we have here in the developer forest. Um, actually, Dirk will be there oh, yeah. a little bit later tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, but we have other people who can walk you through this process and walk you through other development things related to Commerce Cloud. You can also see Commerce Cloud in the campground, in the Customer Expo campground, to get full detail of what Commerce Cloud does in general. Or visit us at the uh, Commerce and Marketing Lodge, which is in the Palace Hotel. So down a couple of blocks. And, uh, and most importantly, tomorrow morning uh, is the Commerce Cloud keynote. You can attend that and get details from there. There's also a couple of trailheads that are out there, giving, kind of give you the basics over Commerce Cloud, if you're just understanding those. So those are available out on Trailhead right now. And with that, I think we're at time. We have a couple minutes. If anybody has questions, feel free to come on up, talk to us afterwards. Uh, and thank you. Thank you.